Madam President. The Majority Leader. I have a request for the Judiciary Committee to meet during today's well, session. Madam, Madam President, can we have order, please? Well, will the Senate be in order, please? Majority Leader. I have a request for the Judiciary Committee to meet during today's session of the Senate. I ask unanimous consent that it be agreed to. Is there objection? Mr. Madam President. Democratic Leader. We have order, please. The Senate will be in order. Madam President, reserving the right to object, the Republican majority on the Judiciary Committee is pressing forward with a confirmation hearing on a Supreme Court nominee whose record has largely been shielded from the Senate and the American public. Over 90% of Judge Kavanaugh's record has not been received by the Senate and may never be. What has been delivered to the committee was pre-screened by a Republican lawyer with no guidelines as to wit what we were receiving and what we weren't. It's just whatever entered his whim. Of that small subset of pre-screened documents, less than 10% of Judge Kavanaugh's full record Chairman Grassley is prohibiting large segments from being shared with the public without explanation. Republicans are trying to jam through, with as little scrutiny as possible, a lifetime appointment to the nation's highest court with the power to affect the lives of Americans for a generation. That's why it's so important for the Senate and the public to review the nominee's record, because health care, a woman's freedom to make medical decisions, civil rights, voting rights, marriage equality, all hang in the balance. And the Republican majority is deliberately obstructing the Senate's constitutional duty to fairly and thoroughly conduct and adv our advise and consent powers. So, order in the chamber. As a result, I, we will not consent to business as usual on the Senate floor today. This means the Senate will adjourn, adjourn for the day after my two colleagues finish speaking. So I object. Objection is heard. Uh, Madam President, I Majority ask, Leader. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to a legislative period. It's a legislative session for a period of morning business. Senators permitted to speak their interrupt for 10 minutes each. Is there objection? I ask Without unanimous objection. consent that when the Senate completes its business today, it adjourns until 12 noon Thursday, September 6. Further, that following the prayer and pledge, the morning hour be deemed expired. The Journal of Proceedings be approved to date. The time for the two leaders be reserved for their use later in the day and morning business be closed. And that following leader remarks, the Senate proceed to a period of morning business with senators permitted to speak their end for up to 10 minutes each. Is there objection? Without objection. So if there's no further business to come before the Senate, I ask to stand adjourned under the previous order following the remarks of Senators Manchin and Inhofe. Without objection. Senator from West Virginia. Madam President, today I call for a live unanimous consent requesting on my resolution to protect nearly 800,000 West Virginians and millions of America from losing their health insurance because of their pre-existing conditions. Uh, this, the Senate will be in order. This is an immediate danger. It's life and death for over 800,000 West Virginians and millions of Americans. Today, oral arguments began in the Texas versus United States lawsuit being waged by 20 U.S. Attorney Generals, including West Virginia's Attorney General. That will once again allow insurance companies to have total control to be able to deny health insurance to people with pre-existing conditions. And now that the Department of Justice has recklessly refused to defend the existing law, people with cancer, heart disease, asthma, diabetes, or pregnant women are at risk of financial and physical duress. Today, we have a chance to help right this wrong. My resolution, Senate Resolution 581, will allow the Senate legal counsel to intervene and defend West Virginians and Americans with pre-existing conditions from this inhumane lawsuit. Even my Republican colleagues have admitted that millions of Americans will lose their health insurance. Senate will insurance. come to order. Will lose their health insurance if the Republican Attorney General succeed. Now that's something when my own colleagues on my Republican friends here in the Senate, over nine have been introduced a piece of legislation that also acknowledged how destructive this will be. In a press release, my good friend from North Carolina, Senator Tillis, and the nine other Republicans who introduced the bill wrote that oral, oral arguments in Texas versus the United States will begin today on September the 5th. And if the judge rules in favor of the plaintiffs, 
protections for patients with pre-existing conditions could be eliminated. What it basically says is the insurance companies will be allowed to determine if you're too sick and too costly for them and they can't make enough profit or see that there's no end in sight, they'll just deny you. 400,000 West Virginians will be denied. They couldn't even buy insurance if they could afford it. The other 400,000 in West Virginia are going to basically have their rates raised or capped. That means they're one illness away, one illness away from financial disaster. Senator Tillis said, this legislation is common sense solution. This is a common sense solution. We want to fix it together. And we're just asking people that basically believe the same as we all have agreed on both sides of this aisle, let's ask our attorney generals to stop this senseless lawsuit, withdraw it. That would cure the problem overnight. But without it, we need to intervene and we're asking for this to happen. So I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Rules and Administration be discharged from further consideration of Senate Resolution 581, that the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration, that resolution be agreed to, the preamble to be agreed to, and the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President. Senator from Oklahoma. Reserving the right to object. Um, right now there is a court case being heard in Texas over the constitutionality of Obamacare. We all are aware of that. In their decision upholding the constitutionality of Obamacare, the Supreme Court said that under the Commerce Clause alone, Obamacare would be unconstitutional. It was only because of the individual mandate, which they saw as a tax, that Obamacare was upheld. Last year, we eliminated the individual mandate in our tax cut, so the constitutionality needs to be revisited, which is what these states are doing. It would be inappropriate for the Senate to intervene in this case. Further, this resolution instructs all provisions of Obamacare to be defended, including the uh, medical device tax, the Cadillac tax, the health insurance tax, and other provisions that have proven extremely unpopular on both sides of the aisle. And for that reason, Madam President, I object. Madam, Madam President, President. Objection is heard. If I could respond, please. If I could respond Senator to my friend. Senator from West Virginia has the floor. From my Senator, my friend from Oklahoma. <laughs> I've already objected. With, and I ask, ask, the objection I ask was heard. Consent, I ask consent to just for the one senator or two from West Virginia has the floor. I'm going to go ahead, and I have a few comments to make, and after that, uh, we'll. Do it. Yeah, I, I, I do have. The, okay, let me just say this: that I, I hear my good friend from Oklahoma, and I understand where they're coming from. I would only say that if that was the intent. If that was the intent, and they keep saying Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, Trump Care, no matter what you want to care, call it, politicizing it, we can fix it. We have a fix. We've had a bipartisan fix laying on the majority leader's desk for over a year now. Twelve Democrats, twelve Republicans working together to fix the things we've talked about. One thing we all agreed on is people with pre-existing conditions should not be left in an inhumane situation where they have nothing to count on, no insurance whatsoever. We've been down that road before. This is a correction. We've had this. Basically, it's against the law for an insurance company to say, listen, you're too sick. You've had high blood pressure. You were born with a heart defect. You had cancer when you were 40 years of age, and now you're 70. It might return. We, we don't want to go down that road again. That's all we've asked for. And even our Republican colleagues agree with that, too. If that was the intent to get rule of this unconstitutional, then that would have been in the tax cut bill. The tax cut bill was the mandate had nothing to do with pre-existing condition. That's still the law. That is still the law of the land. And all we're asking is for them to withdraw their lawsuit. They withdraw the lawsuit, and it's still against the law for any insurance company. If they pass this lawsuit, then it's going to be at the hands and the mercy of insurance companies can say, picking and choosing life and death with so many thousands of people, millions of people, 800,000 West Virginians. That's all. And I understand this is a hot topic, but I can tell you one thing. Healthcare in West Virginia is something that's needed. It's something that we, uh, that we have a chance now to fix that we haven't. We've got opiate addiction, we're able to treat that. Mental illness, we're able to treat that. Senior citizens, we're able to help them close a donut hole. A lot of good things we've all agreed on. The things that we want to fix, 
is what they're harping on, and basically that, that can be taken care of and keep Affordable Care Act where it should be, in the hands of, of the people who need it. And right now we're in jeopardy, so I'm asking for the consideration. I understand the objections and, and I understand the process here, but basically what we're asking for is a human decency and basically the concerns of millions of people in America. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam